Hey everybody. So I thought I would give you an update on this Delph and Death project because uh, we don't have a class. So um, here we go. And if you have any questions, uh, you can go ahead and send me an email. Uh, best to contact me through Canvas, actually, at this point. Uh, you can probably overwhelm me pretty quickly with text messages. But, uh, but the Dolphin Death Project is uh, about uh, this case where we had this thing called an unusual mortality event, UME. It happened in 2013, although it's on the East Coast of the United States, although it has happened uh, Actually, again, in 2000, <coughs> excuse me, 2019 in the Gulf of Mexico. So it happens uh, every now and again. And so I have a little link here, which I'll, I'll post this, uh, this little PowerPoint presentation uh, in the case study so you can see it. But you can put a link through to this little uh, place here. It's a little news article from CNN. So I'll give you a little uh, background into the, uh, the uh, dolphin unusual mortality event. So... Uh, anyways, after you read that uh, case study, after you watch that story, what you're going to do is you're going to take on the role of a particular kind of scientist. We have four different kinds of scientists, and everybody in the group is going to be uh, one kind. Most of your groups have four people in them, so uh, you'll take on a role of either an ecologist, a uh, endocrine physiologist, a virologist, or a uh, immunologist. So there's four four different kinds of scientists. If there's more than uh, four people in your group, then you can double up with somebody. So um, anyways, the idea is to understand why the dolphins are dying, what's going on, and what makes them die. And it could be all kinds of things, right? So all these different uh, roles that you take on are help to figure it out. So everybody in your role as either a virologist or immunologist or endocrine physiologist or ecologist, you're going to do some research and try to figure out what may have caused this event, okay? Now, you can use either the uh, Wednesday College Library, although I'm not really sure uh, how you access it at the moment. Um, or you can also use Google Scholar. I, I've had some success with that. Uh, or you might also try to call the library. I'm pretty sure the librarians will be on staff, although I'm not certain about that because I haven't heard word of that. But um, and I suspect there's probably uh, a uh, Valencia College online, but I haven't checked that out either, unfortunately. But do some research. You want to try to figure out uh, from your role how are viruses, what role do viruses play? What role does, uh, does uh, immunosuppression play? What role does just their, their place in the, you know, in the ecology uh, cause this, these guys to die off? So that's the idea. Now, I put together some, just some things to help guide you, things to look for. Uh, if you're an ecologist, this role here, you might want to think about, you know, the food web and what are they eating and where are they relatively speaking in the food web? Are they at the top, at the bottom? Uh, what role does biomagnification or bioaccumulation play? So you can look these, these terms up in the textbook, uh, but, but uh, bioaccumulation means that these uh, animals uh, accumulate the toxin in their bodies, normally in fat tissue. Of course, dolphins have a lot of fat tissue in the blubber. And then biomagnification means that it works its way up the food chain. That's biomagnification. So we'll look at that. Uh, look to see what extent, to what extent these guys are good sentinels for environmental health. And, uh, and their role is an apex predator. The, the, clearly the dolphin is an apex predator. Right? So that means at the top of the food chain. If you are an immunologist, you might want to look and see what are the different responses that these dolphins have when they're challenged with something like a virus, right? Just like we have this stupid COVID-19 and our bodies, if you, if you have unfortunate luck to catch it, your body is being challenged by your immune system. Now your immune system goes to attack the virus, just like they would do in the dolphin. But sometimes your, your immune system goes, it gets out of whack, which is why some of us end up in the hospital. It's really because of this kind of overreaction of the immune system. So think about that and how that works in the dolphins. And, uh, and then also think about the idea of immunosuppression. So immunosuppression is when the immune system isn't working well for different reasons. So what role does that play? Are the dolphins sick? They have, are they starving to death? Are they have good food? Are they exposed to the chemicals themselves? Uh, reduce their uh, ability to fight off infections. So those ideas. Uh, endocrine physiology would be uh, uh, 
the role of hormones, right? So this is all about hormones. So sometimes these dolphins can be exposed to chemicals in the environment that act like a hormone. So it fools the dolphin's body into thinking that, that there's a hormone reaction going on, but really it's not. It's a, it's a contaminant from, from the outside. That could be a pesticide. Uh, could be PCBs act like this. Uh, these polybrominated diphenyl ethers, that's uh, the stuff that we find in uh, flame retardants. That could be causing it. So all different kinds of things could be causing this immunosuppression or, I'm sorry, it could be causing this, uh, basically fooling the, fooling the body into thinking that it's a hormone. That's what, that's what endocrine physiologists are probably, primarily thinking about. Uh, lastly, the role of viruses. <clears throat> so just like we're being exposed to this uh, COVID-19 virus, uh, dolphins are exposed to quite a few viruses themselves, right? So there could be uh, Wabella virus, Papilloma virus, there's a bunch of them. I'll mention those again in a second. By the way, the word zoonotic is interesting. Zoonotic means that it uh, comes from an animal. So a zoonotic virus would come from like uh, a bat to a human. We would call that a zoonotic. Or if it goes from dolphins to whales, that would be also zoonotic. It goes across species, right? So think about, just like we think about COVID-19, how does this, what's, what's, what, how virulent, right? How easy is it to catch? How does a dolphin give a virus to another dolphin? Good question, right? I mean, do they come up out of the water and spit at each other? I don't know. So that's some research you guys could do. So uh, as we think about this project, just know that uh, we consider dolphins animal sentinels. They are good sentinels uh, for these different reasons, which you can read on your own. Uh, uh, but they do bioaccumulate. They tend to stay in one area for a long time. They tend to live a long time in one spot, which that, so they accumulate toxins from that environment. They also live pretty long. I, I'm not sure exactly how long they live, but I think it's like 30 years or something. So pretty good long time. Uh, so these dolphins are exposed to lots of contaminants, basically human or anthropogenic contaminants uh, that we release. These could be, uh, well, the polybrominated uh, diphenyl ethers, which are in uh, flame retardants, furniture, pajamas were one thing, textiles generally, electronics, clothing. And these, uh, and these uh, PBDEs, they actually accumulate in the ocean. The, the, the sink, the ocean is a sink for them. Remember what a sink is? We talked about a carbon sink a while ago. A sink is where it all goes for a long vacation. So the oceans are a sink. They end up there. And then, of course, the dolphins are, are also a great sink for PBDEs and really any uh, lipophilic uh, compound. When you get to chapter, well, in this chapter eight, one of my lectures, we talk about lipophilic versus uh, 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 lipophobic uh, chemicals. And so ones that like fat are lipophilic. And so these contaminants can then cause neurotoxicity, so affect the brain, uh, the thyroid hormone, they can uh, cause cancer. So all these things happen. Um, also, the other ones would be PCBs and then perfluorinated compounds. So what's a perfluorinated compound? Well, you actually know one. If you are cooking with a uh, Teflon pan, that is a perfluorinated compound. So you know when you're cooking with one of those, we had those, uh, and the little the stuff tries to scrape off sometimes, that can get uh, into the environment and then can be picked up and accumulate in, uh, in fat tissue. So that's some ideas about um, what, to, uh, what to do with all this information. So uh, if you have any questions, you know, go ahead and, and use the uh, Canvas to send me a uh, uh, message. I'll try to be checking it uh, every day now. So otherwise, uh, good luck with this project. I look forward to seeing what you guys come up with. By the way, everybody needs to contribute. Every team member needs to contribute. I want you to put your initials in it so I know who did what. And uh, I'll be giving another lecture in a few minutes, or maybe tomorrow, about how to use some of the technology within Canvas to make this all work more easily when you're separated by distance, right? So anyway, be safe out there, drink lots of water, don't shake hands, stay home like I am pretty much for the most part, and uh, hopefully we can avoid this uh, coronavirus. Right, take care, good luck.